Once a year, two kids in America get to live out the ultimate dream. I still don't believe it. I think I'm going to wake up in about two seconds. It's Nickelodeon's Super Toy Run, a game-grabbing toy-snagging rampage through a KB Toy Works store. Nickelodeon created it, and only Nickelodeon's got it. Did you get everything you wanted? Yeah, and more. The boys sent in the most postcards, so Mark Martelli of Reading, Pennsylvania won the grand prize, a five-minute toy run. Jessica Williams of Edmonds, Washington, won first prize, a three-minute run. The winners went wild. 108 video games. One house. Five by Eight board games. Seven dogs. One mint. Three beanbags. Six action figures. Eight stuffed animals. Five models. One human skull. Two sleds. Nine radio controls. Over $9,100 worth of toys. So much stuff. <laughs> the store manager almost fainted. And the winner did. Nickelodeon Super Toy Run. More proof that... A Nickelodeon kids really do win, and that's a fact. Nickelodeon Super Toy Run was brought to you by KB Toy Stores and Domino's Pizza. Child world, child world, a super toy store and a whole lot more. Why struggle through traffic, waste valuable gas and money, only to find the toy or game you want is out of stock? Now is the time to shop Child World. Our shelves are loaded with the games, toys, bikes, dolls, and electronic games your kids want. And we'll save you money. Child world, child world, a super toy store. It's a what? It's a swing wing. It's a wing wing. A brand new traffic grand fun thing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. A fun thing. And now it's your favorite store thing. It's a what? It's a swing wing. A fun thing. And every pop gotta have one thing. It's a swing wing. A wing wing, a brand new transit grand fun thing. It's a swing wing, a new thing. It's a swing wing. Get swing wing made by Transigram, where the fun comes from. It's a swing wing. It's a what? <laughs> Some economists say 1992 has already contributed to Europe's current economic boom, but many in the U.S. are worried that American companies will be shut out. One American company that certainly will not be is Toys R Us. It is already a rousing success in England and Germany, and it's just beginning to move in the Paris suburbs. Well, Jeff Madrick tells us now that it is a classic example of what American business still does best. It is simply one of the great post-war retail businesses of America. There are 350 Toys R Us across the land, some 55 in foreign countries. All highly organized toy supermarkets. All the same size, all of which look just like this one. The games are arranged in alphabetical order. The toys are carefully stocked and closely tallied. One truck of goods goes to only one store to minimize losses and maximize efficiency. And altogether, Toys R Us produces about $4 billion in sales and a quarter of a billion dollars in profits. While a Toys R Us store looks easy to run, no competitor has come close to duplicating its success. Founder and chairman Charles Lazarus is not merely a master of marketing, but also of warehousing and inventory control and personnel management of business on a mass scale. All the coloring books, markers, crayons, Crayola, tremendous, tremendous. By doing all that very well, his toy supermarkets are able to offer customers about the best prices around. Lazarus started in his father's bicycle repair shop in Washington, D.C. after World War II. His retail concept blossomed in the 1950s. Once, the kids sometimes ask me, how did you ever get to be that big? And I said, well, one day I decided to open the second store. And after that, it seemed to get easier. Do you ever wake up now and say, my gosh, this, really, this is an American dream come true? Yes, I do. And I'm very thankful for it. But with American business being beaten in so many places around the world, Lazarus is also at the vanguard of another mission. He's bringing what is best about American business, marketing, and distribution to the rest of the world. 
most recently France. And it is no exaggeration to say that he is conquering it. Lazarus' first overseas store was open near London. It was a smash. After several more successes, he opened a store in Frankfurt, Germany. Here again, he broke new ground and earned unprecedented success. According to legend, little folk know Hills is where the toys are. Hills has toy layaway. Just 10% down, a small service charge, and regular budget payment. Aisle after aisle, hundreds of toys for fun and for learning, for girls and for boys. Low prices, selection, and toy layaway. More good reasons why they stay. Hills is where the toys are. You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. In our country, there are many different kinds of factories making many different kinds. In factories, people work together at machines to make many of the products that help us live better and easier. The products made in a factory take a great deal of planning, preparation, and work on the part of many people. Let's visit a typical factory. In this toy factory, millions of toys are made. Toys like these honey bears. Musical clocks. Toy guitars. And merry-go-rounds. But now, let's see how this factory plans for and produces a new product. Let's see how a factory works. This is the factory's planning board. These men plan or decide what the factory shall make. At today's meeting, a number of ideas are presented. One man suggests that the company manufacture a jack-in-the-box, and he draws a rough sketch to show what it might look like. Then the idea is improved upon. Why not make a jack-in-the-box with music? A kind of jack-in-the-music box. Sketches of this idea are sent to the experimental department. A worker in this department makes a sample or experimental model of the new toy. This is what the jack in the music box will probably look like if it is finally manufactured. The model is now taken to the art department. Here, an artist makes rough sketches of pictures that may be used to decorate the outside of the Jack in the Music box. Then he takes his sketches and the decorated box back to another meeting of the planning board. The men on the planning board check the completed model. They look over the sketches, deciding which ones they want to appear on the new toy. The Jack in the Music Box is finally approved for production. Engineering is the next step in the production of the toy. In the engineering department, highly trained engineers plan exactly what parts will be needed and how the toy will be made. 
They also designed the tools that would be used to make the parts for the toy. The engineering department's plans are put onto blueprints. The head of each factory department will read these blueprints and be able to tell his workers what to do. One set goes to the tooling department. Here, tool and die workers make the machines or tools that will be needed to manufacture the parts for the toy. Here are some of the tools being made. Another set of blueprints goes to the purchasing department. This department will buy the raw materials, the cloth, springs, metal sheets, and other things that will be needed to make the new toy. Finally, extra workers must be hired to do the work. The man in charge of the personnel department is interviewing a woman who wants a job. The raw materials to make the toy arrive at the factory. Steel tubing, coils of wire, strips of metal, and the many other materials that will be needed. Workers arrive at the factory to do the many different jobs. Now the tools have been made. The machinery has been moved into place. The parts for the jack and the music box are coming off the production line. This machine is called a shearer. It cuts off strips of metal for the body of the toy. This automatic punch press is finishing the chime bar for the jack and the music box. The chime bar makes the music. This coil of wire is fed into another punch press. This press uses a piece of metal called a die to cut off and form cranks and axles for the new toy. Now the parts have been made and the workers are ready to assemble or put together the jack in the music box. This is the assembly line. Each worker here does one special job, adding her part to the toy as it passes along the line. Let's start at the beginning of the assembly line and follow the process through. This is the first assembly operation. This woman is using a machine which bends the flat metal sheets into the can body that will be used for the jack in the music box. The cans move down to the next worker on the line. This worker joins or rivets in the parts that make the music. This is what they look like in place. This girl puts on the crank and the rubber belt that make the music parts work. Then she checks the music making part of the toy. Another worker places a cardboard tube containing the clown's suit inside the can. And still another worker operates a machine that puts the top and bottom on the can body. 
curling the edges so the toy will be safe to play with. Now the clown's head is made ready for the new toy. A worker glues a hat on the head. Then the head is attached to the long spring that will make it pop up. The spring, with its head, is placed inside the suit and the cardboard tube. The suit is clipped around the clown's neck and the toy is tested to make certain that it works right. Finally, the completed Jack in the Music Box is placed inside a cardboard container, ready to be sold to us. This is the sales department of the factory. The toy is being sold, and orders are coming in. Here is an order for 36 dozen. Shipping containers filled with toys are loaded into railroad cars. Trucks are loaded too. And the toys are sent on their way to hundreds of stores everywhere. You have seen some of the steps that must go on in almost any factory in order to manufacture a product. First, the planning board plans the product. Next, the experimental department and the art department make the first model. Then, the engineering department designs the parts and tools needed raw materials, and workers come into the factory. Now the parts are made on the production line. Next, the parts move down an assembly line and are put together. Finally, the product is shipped to stores all over the country. From factories come a great many of the things that make life better, easier, and more fun for all of us. Watching Sleepcore, Media for Insomnia. Children's Palace, Children's Palace, let's take a look and see. I'm Peter Panda. Children's Palace, Children's Palace, 
There are so many bicycles. And remember, always ride your bike very carefully. I will, Peter Panda. Don't forget. And over here, there are nice doll carriages. And more, and more. <laughs> what a toy store. I love it. I love it. Children's house, everything a toy store should be. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Yeah, monkey's uncle. New stunt race game with a monkey business name. Spread the stunts out every place. Make it tough to win the race. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Wind the timer, run and take. The stunt that says, be a snake. It's great, monkey's uncle. Time is going tick, tick, tick. Do a rooster who is sick. cock a doodle choo. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Hurry, hurry, do those tricks. For the monkey's out of ticks. Run wild, monkey's uncle. Time. Now's your turn to show your speed. Do more stunts and take the lead. Run wild. Wild monkey's uncle, catch a fish and give a toot. Be an owl who cries. Ooh, ooh. It's fun, monkey's uncle. Time. Wiggle, waddle, quick, quick, quick. Do the build a tower trick. Twelve stunts, just three tries. Case of ties, in monkey's eyes. And you're a monkey's uncle. It's wild. wild. Complete with stunt mats, cards, horns, clickers, tricks, spinner, and monkey timer. From Transagram, where the fun comes from. From our studios in Rockefeller Center. Here again is Jane Pauley. Seems to happen every Christmas. One particular toy takes off like a rocket and moving almost as fast, frenzied parents desperate to find it. So what's the next bestseller? One toy maker is betting on a new super heroine. She's from the same Japanese company that brought you the Power Rangers. Here's Lucky Severson. <laughs> They make one out of every three cars that Americans drive. And most of the cameras and TVs, Walkman and VCRs. And now they've invaded our toy industry. American kids or their parents bought a billion dollars worth of mighty Morphin Power Ranger toys in 18 months. Last Christmas, they scoured shelves and even offered bribes for toy rangers. And now, heads up, this blonde bombshell and her girlfriends have invaded the U.S. She's called Sailor Moon. And she's the latest hot item out of the brain factory of this man, Makoto Yamashina. Just a girl's communication. No boys. Yamashina is the president of Bondi, the biggest threat to the American toy industry in memory. We're at the International Toy Fair in Tokyo. Distributors from all over the world come here to find what's new, what's up next in the $18 billion a year industry. Bondi is now the world's third largest toy maker, aiming to be number one by the year 2000. What's going to make you more successful than most other companies in this business? Because we concentrate on the, the trend, the, the, the characters. This is a comic crazed country. Kids and grown-ups bought 554 million comics last year. When a comic gets hot, popular, Bondi rushes in and licenses the characters, makes the toys, and then sponsors the television series with the toy characters. How do you change your programs for, for the Japanese audience to the American audience? Very simple. The costume is the same, the content is the same, but the... Uh, Casting stars is uh, different from American stars. Bondi's blonde Sailor Moon and her four girlfriends invaded the United States in September. These are Power Rangers who can be sweet and innocent one minute, tough and sexy the next. Now, does Sailor Moon here in Japan have blonde haired? Yes, from the beginning, yes. I have not seen too many Japanese girls who have blonde hair. So that's why the dream, you know, uh, the Japanese girl sees the black hair, but uh, she would like to be blonde. The creator of Sailor Moon is a young woman with black hair who's fresh out of college, Naoki Takeuchi. In a country where women still have their place and it's almost always behind a man, she's created a hit comic where all the heroes are women. There has never been anything like it before, female superheroes fighting villains. And if it makes girls feel good and want to see more, then I'm happy. Comics have been very good to Naoki. She's a millionaire whose hardest decision most days is whether to drive her Ferrari or her Porsche. When she does worry, it's over the changes they're making to Sailor Moon for the American audience, toning down her sexuality. 
she'll be wearing more clothes, and her TV programs won't have the sexual banter of the Japanese version. Drop that crystal! It's Sailor Moon! <laughs> Projected Sailor Moon sales for the U.S. this year, $150 million. Dreams for the kids, nightmares for American toy makers. Here's a shopping tip for smart toy shoppers, Playco. That's right, Playco, your best toy store. Now, if you wonder why Playco's such a hot tip, ask yourself these questions. Who stocks a fantastic selection of all the most popular toys? Who sells that great selection at the lowest everyday prices around? And who offers friendly on-the-spot sales assistance to help you find what you need? You bet it's Playco. Low prices, friendly help when you need it, and a great toy selection. Playco, it really is your best toy store. Sport toys and hobbies and more. It's Playco, your best toy store. Playco has a fun way to beat the high cost of housing. Playhouses by Z. Made of durable vinyl, they're easy to set up, roomy as can be, and lots of fun indoors or out. There are two models to choose from, Country Cottage or Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and they're just $11.69 each at Playco, your best toy store. Playco, not the biggest, just the best. At Penny's, we have toys that race, and walk, crawl, and talk, wobble, and whirl. Toys that buzz, beep, bark, tweet, ring, click, and jump. All the toys you see on TV and many exclusives at prices as low as you'll get anywhere. Charge them at Penny's. This week, The Generals, Ideal's electronic battle game, just $23.88. Holly Hobby Bake Oven from Coleco, the electronic oven that actually bakes. Sale price, $14.99. Fiddlesticks, the giant toy builder set from Knickerbocker, only $16.97. And as Peter Panda says, it's so nice to know that prices are low and shopping is friendly and fun. World, everything a toy store should be. Make the new Cone Brothers your toy headquarters this Christmas season. Our huge toy selection is sure to warm your children's hearts, and our in-house credit financing makes it easy on your budget. Register to win a free giant Christmas stocking for the kids. Come in and open your account today. You've known us and grown with us for over 80 years. It's just like coming home. the turtles and rat into superheroes. The mutant teenage turtles use martial arts to fight the bad guys. We don't know why they're teenagers. If it looks foolish to you, you don't know how to recognize a $350 million a year industry when you see it. But Alan Cox does. Eric Johansson is rushing down the aisle at Target because he's learned an important lesson. You gotta get to the store as soon as it opens to get a shot at the turtle of your dreams. Or one of the nearly dozen bad guys and a costume set. No, not that one. I guess this one's not as cool. And for high rollers, the sewer playset. Do you want sewer swimming Donatello? Or do you want the racking? Or... I just got the racking. It's entertainment and it seems relatively harmless. They don't provide turtle toys at childcare centers like Children's World, but talk to the kids and you'd never know it. Turtle power. They fight with the bad guys. Ninja Turtles live in the sewers. Yeah, they live underground. All this, even though in daycare, they never turn on the TV show. But a lot of kids do on Channel 9 every afternoon and come spring in a new $15 million movie. An impressive achievement for comic book characters who started in black and white with doses of bloodletting and profanity for an adolescent audience. Marketers saw the potential, toned the turtles down for a younger crowd. So they sell cookies and cereal, draw kids into Burger King. It worries some parents. There's a lot of violence, which doesn't seem to connect very often with much of a plot. There's a good deal of sexism. 
The lead female character often gets into trouble and has to be rescued, although that may be because she's a TV reporter. Another criticism is that the cartoon show can be seen as one big advertisement for the toys. Some members of Congress propose outlawing that kind of children's TV. That wouldn't go over too well at the Sweetman household, where the toys sharpen debating skills. They live in Dimension X. Yeah, no. Yeah, but, yeah, they go into mental. But, um, no, they were taken from the city's zoo. And they teach a sense of humor. They say, like, really funny things. Yeah, like, Michelangelo says, Call a bunga, dude. We tried to get in the fun by bringing a container of turtle ooze. It's kind of disgusting, isn't it? I know, really disgusting. Obviously, some of us are too old to appreciate these things, but for the young of America, turtle power lives. Alan Cox, WCCO Television News. <laughs> It'll turn your brain to mush. That's what I tell the children at home. There are 600 different turtle products, and Mark Rosen has every one of them in his house. <laughs> Thank goodness my kids have not discovered this <laughs> no, program oh, as yet. They all will. right. <laughs> well, next in... Hello, all you people out there in Gameland. Today, we're going to play an exciting new game called Loop-A-Lot. Now, this is based on this scientific principle. You put your finger in the hole, then you take a penny. So you put it right there, or you spin it around, I drop my penny. I'll be, I'll be right back. You spin the Loop-A-Lot, you stop, or you still got the penny. Now, where did that penny go? You can do this with one penny or two. Hmm, where would I be if I was a penny? Penny? Aha, here we are. You see, it's the centrifugal force, the in going to the out, which keeps the penny in place. And, if, and when you get to be a super looper, you can use one, two, or three pennies. Loop-a-lot is a Parker game. So is Monopoly. Oh, 